Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Good news, David Drakey, 1686, sent us our first thank you. A little tip there, a little gratuity. Thanks so much. Thank we you. really appreciate you, that was awesome. Again, I'm Andrew, this is Aggie. We're here at Nexus Jiu Jitsu in Folsom. And today we're gonna go over some more K-Guard stuff. There is a video that we made in the past where we enter K-Guard from closed guard. We go into backside 50-50, Look at how to block the far leg so they can't backstep into conventional 50-50. Today we're gonna to look at the entry to the K guard, get to our, our backside 50-50 in, inside heel hook, and then we're gonna look at what happens if they do backstep. If they do backstep, we need to follow. We need to have options. I don't like to land in conventional 50-50. I'd rather land in 80-20, 90-10, something like that, which I'll kinda of talk about briefly. I'm not gonna go super in depth because I wanna make a video about that later. And then we're gonna talk about options if when we hit backside 50-50, they start to pummel their knee out or start to kind of run from us. That's when we can start entering more matrix style options. In no gi, the matrix is fairly particular um, because I don't have the pants to grab onto, the skirt of the gi, the belt, et cetera. So I like to go about it in a very certain fashion. Um, and we're gonna kind of go on the, on the premise that the person is trying to run away from us, which is what I experience most, right? If they do start feeling their back get threatened, maybe they'll pull guard. But most of the time they try to run away to get to a safe position. So we're gonna go through all those options. Again, I have a K-Guard uh, video from in the past that you can go check out and I'll link it below. But this one's we're gonna go in a little more in depth if we can't stabilize and isolate the backside 50-50 for the heel hook, all right? So let's get after it. All right, so we're gonna be starting in our closed guard and and what I talked about in the last one is we're, we were really like pulling them forward and as they sat back, that's when we can get into the option. But also I, I use this motion a lot in MMA training and when I talk to my MMA students about being able to get frames between them and somebody on top, especially good wrestlers who are like holding you down. What I like to work towards is either cross shoulder posts or cross armpit posts. And when I can get into these positions, even if she's very like close to me, like elbows down, she's like holding on to me, I can go into cross shoulder posts and work my hips out so I can start bringing my knees inside, right? Now it's not too hard for me to pummel this knee inside and start playing from here to enter into the legs. And a lot of times I can use this to push them away as well. And as they come back, it's easy to enter the legs, right? So that's kind of the way we're looking at this one today playing here, I'm just going into a cross armpit post and a scoop grip. As I do that, I'm gonna start scissoring my legs out and bring my knee in front of their chest. What's really important, in my opinion, with K-Guard early, is that I get my knee inside their thigh and I look to try to get as close as I can, get my foot, the sole of my foot, to their belly or ribs area, right? So I'm playing here. I like to really pull this in and start to drive them forward with my knee, this knee here. See, I'm kind of like pushing her away. As I do that, I can go to now a gable grip and pull the knee to my chest. This is what's gonna generally give me that connection I need when I wanna go into the backside 50-50 for finishes. You notice my knee is inside and my foot is right up against their ribs. So if she tried to come back towards me, it's a really strong frame, even if they were quite a bit bigger than me. Watch Lachlan Giles in the uh, ADC seat, right? He heel hooked two or three guys that outweighed him by 50 plus pounds, right? So now I'm gonna extend with my knee and foot, put my foot on the, on the ribs and armpit to keep her pushed away from me. And that's what's giving me this flank so I can enter into my backside attacks, right? So as I push her forward, I can look to throw this leg over the top. And what we looked at was using this foot to block her leg from backstepping. Right? And I can attack, heel hook here and finish. It's great. But when I want to go to that finish, I want to make sure I'm grabbing the toes, right hand to right toes. And look how I'm grabbing. Thumb right on the big toe, okay? Grabbing right here. There's a purpose behind this. As I go to pull her leg into a bent position, I want to pull her toes to my shoulder. This actually makes it really hard for them to backstep, even if I didn't have this because I'm creating tension in the ankle and knee joint. So I pull here, boom, really strong, and I stab her knee down into the mat. So I keep a bent leg. Bent legs, bent limbs are very hard to rotate in most scenarios, 
right? And that's what I want for the heel hook. Now I can post on the ankle, look to catch, tricep to toes, pinch between ribs and, and tricep, catch the heel, lock it in. I can lock in a bunch of different fashions. And now I can finish with hips and subtle rotation, hands to chin, chin to hands, okay? So we've seen that plenty of times on the channel. But now let's look at scenarios where they start to unravel the position um, and there's other opportunities we need to get into, okay? So sometimes when I go here, I start getting my armpit post, my uh, scoop grip, and scissoring my legs, boom. I extend them out. I start looking to get into my lock. As I step through, sometimes they're already backstepping and they're going to a seated position here, okay? And that's not entirely uncommon, especially nogi, sweaty, right? We're moving around, it's frantic, okay? So again, I'm entering here, playing into my K guard, pushing her out, going here, looking to throw this leg over, and she starts to backstep here. As she backsteps, what I wanna try to do, if we just land like this, we're just in 50-50, right? They're gonna be sitting up fighting me with their hands, I'm gonna be sitting up fighting them, I'm trying to get my attacks, they're trying to get their attacks. What I wanna do is find a position where it's more like 80-20, 90-10, etc. What I've always found is, when we're sitting up here in 50-50, if our chests face each other, it's, it's literally a 50-50. Who's stronger, who's faster, who gets the attack first? I would suggest against triangling your legs here, because if she triangles her legs here, like, like pulls her foot back, well, now if I go for a toe hold on this foot, she has no ability to roll out of the position. And if you watch Nicky Rod versus Gordon Ryan 2, their second match, Gordon Ryan apparently got his ankle really, really hurt in that position with Nicky Rod because he didn't respect Nicky Rod there. He didn't realize Nicky Rod knew what he was doing. So Nicky Rod jumped on the toe hold and, and exploded Gordon's ankle. And Gordon doesn't usually tap the things like that, so he didn't. But in this scenario, if I go here, I start attacking toe hold, she's locked in this position and she can't really go anywhere. So a lot of times you get good breaks there. So I would suggest against that, what I like to do is I just like to touch my feet together here, right? To keep it safe, right? But that's not how you're gonna win this position. What I believe and what I've seen in, my, in, in history is the person who can rotate their chest towards the other person's feet and hide their inside knee is the one who's gonna win out the 50-50 scenario. That's when you start getting to 80, 20, 90, 10. So what I like to do is rotate and drop this knee here. So now even if she catches my heel, like in a heel hook fashion, it's so shallow and my knee's so free that it's very unlikely she's gonna be able to break me here. Whereas I own the knee line entirely, okay? So this is the scenario I'm looking for. Now I can play here, crossing my feet, touching my feet together, 80, 20, or I can lace my leg over her hips and start pulling her to me with this leg and go into variations of 90-10, right? Now, I own the knee line. I'm completely safe because toes out, heels in. Her heel is completely susceptible. And what I want to do here now is get up on my shoulder and put my butt and my hips between us so she literally just can't hand fight. So I'll come up here, elbow over the toes, get up on my shoulder. So now she tries to reach to hand fight, she can't even reach my hands here because my whole butt and hips are in the way. Right? It's really hard for her to get there, okay? So the whole position again, so we can really see all those details. And this is how I find winning out 50-50 is really uh, the most powerful scenario. Okay, so again, we're starting here. I'm going across uh, armpit post. And even if there's punches here, like if this is MMA, as long as I'm expedient here, it's not like she's gonna be able to land too much. And especially when they rock back to throw a punch, it's like a really good time to get into the motion, right? So it's still a super effective motion uh, for MMA. Okay? So I'm going here, scooping, creating that scissor, extending them out, boom, playing here, foot in the armpit, controlling the toes, stepping over, and now she backsteps. As she backsteps, I'm gonna come through, dropping my knee to the mat, getting my elbow over there, toes and getting my hips up. Look, here. Now, it's gonna be very hard for her to roll again. Her foot's trapped, my knee's blocking it. My knee is free, her knee is, I own the knee line, 
And now I can either keep my foot here, which would be really hard for an attack toe hold while I'm breaking her, or I can lace this leg through and pull myself into 90-10. And now from here, it's rather easy for me to hurdle her heel over my wrist, control, hips in, and there's a really strong heel hook attack, right? One more quick angle change, just so you can see exactly how I'm getting the heel in this scenario. So we just roll through, boom, we're coming up, landing here. I'm just gonna put my elbow inside the toes, hurdle her heel up, wrist back, catch that heel right on my wristwatch, locking in. And now I can go right on my shoulder. And again, you see my hips, everything's between her hands and my hands. And now I can either lace this through here, I can keep it here, and now I just hip in, and there's my heel hook break. All right, last option we're gonna look at for this K-guard scenario we're, we're playing with is if they hurdle their knee over my thigh and start to run, right? This is where I'm gonna go into matrix options. Now, it's really important you watch what I do with this leg once we get into the backside scenario for the matrix. Okay, pobbling through, cross armpit post, scooping the leg, scissoring here, extending them out, playing here, I'm pushing, and now I start to throw this leg over the top. Once I get here, maybe I just didn't do my due diligence, pushing the knee down, pinching my legs, who knows, right? She's able to hurdle her knee over my leg here, okay? It's important that as that process is happening, I'm opening this knee, okay? Come back one step. So if I'm here and I start to feel this knee going, I'm gonna go here, look, boom, opening this knee. And now my foot is really tucked down inside her knee, pinning her to the mat, right? So just for a little bit of a different angle, I get here to backside 50-50, I start feeling the knee pummeling out, I go here, boom. And now you see her foot is shelved on my hip and my knee and shin are pressing down into her knee pit. I can't leave this leg floating here because knee bars and inside heel hooks, if you watch Mika Galvao versus, I think it was either Ty, one of the Rotolo brothers, um, Mika's leg got kind of extended inside and he got heel hooked. It was a trip, beautiful, beautiful scenario. But I want to make sure that I start retracting this knee. And as I do, I hold on to the far ankle. So if she tried to run, she'd be kind of stifled here. And now this foot, I'm going to have to clear in a second. So now I start to sit myself up playing here and I'm going to look to go from controlling the heel to controlling the hip. As I do, watch what I do with this leg. I extend, boom, see how her foot came out. And now I have both hips here, which is a really <laughs> awesome position for me right now, right? So now that I'm controlling both hips, if she tried to run, she'd pull me up with her. If she stays here, I can clear my legs out and come on top. If she pushes back into me, I can extend and take the back. Most scenarios, I feel people pulling, right? So as they pull, I just come up, start chasing the back, and playing any conventional back takes that I want to get into from there, okay? So one more time from a slightly different angle. Again, I throw my leg over. She starts to hurdle her knee through, and I go here, boom, and I look for this. Look, I'm controlling the ankles. Okay, now I'm gonna look to sit myself up and find the hip. The hip bone has a really good pocket that you can hook into, it's like a good no-gi grip. So I sit myself up and I grab onto that hip pocket and then I grab both. Now you see her foot is shelved on my, on my hip here and that's gonna stop me from coming up. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna extend my right leg and now her foot pops out. Now here, I have really good control of those hips, right? Again, awesome position for me, right? As she pulls away, she's gonna bring me up. So right as she, I feel that force, like they're a sprinter trying to run, she brings me up, I can chase the corner, and look to get into my back takes. All right, there you have it, okay? Another little K-guard video. Again, I have one from the past where we looked at K-guard, they back step to 50-50, we kind of lose the position, and how to stop the back step, right? There's a lot of ways to stop the back step but sometimes you can't, right? So what we're looking at here is entries to K-guard from close guard, ways to get into our, our heel hook there, right? And then if they do backstep, how do we follow? How do we play that scenario? We really wanna follow up onto our shoulder, 
Look to drop our inside knee, play 80-20, 90-10, and get really, really strong breaks there. They can't really roll out of those positions. It's almost like an out inverted scenario for an outside ashi. Like outside ashi stops the roll through, so does the uh, inside 50-50 or 80-20 if you're playing it properly, right? It's really hard for them to roll through. Another option that sometimes happens is when we hit backside 50-50 options, people will run like they're sprinters out of the blocks. They wanna pummel that knee over the top and escape, right? Right there, they're giving us matrix options. In the gi, the matrix is very sound. No gi, there's some things that we really have to do. I'm looking for those hip grips, right? You can grab right on the hips, like this, like little monkey grips, and that right there is a really good connection. No gi, even in the gi, but in the gi, you just grab the skirt or whatever. So those are some really good options for you guys out there. Uh, someone did ask me previously about all my ideas around 50, 50, 80, 20, 90, 10. That's a little snapshot right there. So I hope it helps you guys out. Try it out. Throw a little thanks, a like, subscribe, mm -hmm. hit the notification bell. Do another thanks. Thanks again to Blakey, 18, David, David Blakey, 1868 or 86. You're we really appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, again, that made my day. Yeah, it was that great. Was, I was so excited. Super when I grateful. Saw that. I was like, yeah, we were like, oh my God. I sent her a text. Yeah. I was like, look at this screenshot. So thank you so much for that. Thank again, you. like, subscribe, notification bell. If you want to see anything in the future, throw it down in the comments. We love you guys. Thanks so much. I hope it helps. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.